ready. Mars, get set, ready, go, action. Uh, wake up, it's time to die with Cliff Coptons. A special guest will be Tracy Smothers. You okay if I get dressed while we're doing it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm in the Legends Battle Royale. Fuck it, fuck it, man. Come on, fuck it. Move like he can move, he can do cartwheels, he can drop kick, hey, now. He, he can splash. The legendary, one of my personal favorites actually, the wild-eyed southern boy himself, Tracy Smothers. And the reason we're able to get all these A-list uh, celebrity slash wrestlers is because we are in fact at WrestleCade here in Winston-Salem. And uh, I was just wondering, Train, who were uh, who were some of the guys you met this this weekend, and, and who was cool to you? Was anyone a real asshole or no? Who were who were some of the the big time guys you met? Uh, I met Awesome Kong for the first time. Awesome Kong, wow! Now, now you told me that you were impressed with how much weight she lost. Yeah. Yep, I was. Okay. Cause she looked different when she first walked through the door. I didn't know who she was. So I looked there really good. I said, That's Awesome Kong. <laughs> What's up? What's well, up? Well, I guess uh, no introduction needed. Uh, Tracy. Freight train. Freight train. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. All right. Uh, you. Uh, Tracy, uh, you, usually I have you sit next to t next to me, and a uh, big co-host here sits in your seat. If you don't, if you don't mind. So we'll switch. Yeah, we'll switch. switch. Uh, right on. Is it okay if I get dressed while we're doing it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm in the Legends Battle Royal. Yeah, yeah, it's a battle royal. Uh, hey, I'm gonna set the record for the quickest elimination. Eliminate myself. All right. Don't pull Robert Gibson's line. Now, anyone who doesn't know, and this is a worldwide audience, Tracy, right. uh, oh, this right. is the one, the only, the legend himself, the wild eyed Southern boy, one of my personal favorites in pro wrestling, Tracy fucking Smothers, everybody. Hey, I watched Cliff Compton when I was that high. <laughs> no, honestly, Larry Sharp, how is he? He's good. He's very. Oh, I always talk that. about him, don't we? <laughs> he's all right. He's right. just car yeah. keys. He's still running that Monster Factory? He is. He's retired, and yeah. uh, the, but the Monster Factory is going strong. Now, you mentioned Larry Sharp. Have you ever have you ever worked with Larry? Oh gosh, you want to hear a good story? I want to hear. Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, Everybody is remembers him. Bam Bam yeah. Beast from the East. Bam Bam was on 60 Minutes. Uh, had had killed a man. I think at voluntary manslaughter in, 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 in a bar fight. You know what I mean? In Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Asbury Park. You know there. Yeah, it's you? a rough area. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, Take your time. No, no yeah, rush. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get bought up with dressed. That's not a good sign, is it's it? It's all right. No. But anyway, anyway, 1986. 86. Larry had trained Bam Bam. He was on 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes was a big deal back then. Well, let me just say you're looking very fit, by the way. I'm like uh, fat. You know? Well, no fit. I could be 30, 40 pounds heavier, but I like to be about 20, 30 pounds lighter. Right. But honest to God, Larry Sharp, uh, I had just come back working for Bill Watts in Louisiana. Uh, Bam Bam come into the territory. He was on 60 Minutes. There was no, you know, Cable TV. Well, WWE was on. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, USA, yeah, USA TBS. I guess they were. You know, you know. But that was a big deal, and that was his first job. And uh, who's he work with first night? Me. Tracy <laughs> fucking. <Smith. laughs> that was so funny. I was just like, well, I mean, I was. You know. But, but why you? I mean, you were you were well, at this time a seasoned veteran. I mean, you were very. I've been working good. three years. Oh, I mean, three I, years. I started in '83. But I mean, I could, you know, but Bam Bam, they didn't know what he, you know, his temperament. I mean, you know, Lawler was wanting to work a program with him, but he's wanting to build him and do it right. Cause it ended up when he drew a lot of money. Sure. And, and Larry coming in and did the interviews. Bam Bam didn't talk or nothing. He said, I mean, look with the forehead, yeah. you know, Tattoo. with the tattoos and all. Oh yeah, man, it was menacing looking. And uh, Evansville is where he started. That was always payday. Indiana? Yeah, Evansville, Indiana was his first night at the Coliseum, the old Coliseum. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, and just, you know, everybody was like, wow, checking him out. Because guys didn't look like that back then. Oh, he's then. big. What, six You know what I mean? You know, he was six four. He could, he could move like he could move. He could do cartwheels. He oh. could drop kick. Hey, now. He, he could splash with the canvas, splash with the top rope. That was his finish. Wow. He could he could do anything. A super kick. I mean, it, it was amazing what he could do. No, you're and in your I, underwear, I, I, also. Right? I know. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, luckily, uh, the production here is all, all men. So. Right, 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 right. But I uh, don't give a fuck. No, no. You it's know, rest. But, yeah, right, right. Hey, turn hey, turn your head. I don't want everybody to laugh. Okay. <laughs> I've been using that for 31 years. But anyway, anyway, honestly, <laughs> um, man, I gotta get dressed. I got a battle roll. I'm on third. Train. Anything you want to yeah, say here? Well. 
No, we think trying to get dressed. Get dress. I get blown up getting dressed. I mean, I'm serious. It starts at five. I'm on third. Blue. What the fuck? So you can get dressed. It's shriveled up to nothing. Nobody say it's over. It's hey. Anyway, hey. So bam, bam, right? And and uh, uh, and I and you know he went down and he says he looks looks at me and, and everybody was all scared of him and I wasn't scared of him it wasn't I respected him and I knew sure. and, but I, you know what you know who he 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 knew this business he was very smart and just a natural and he looked and he goes hey he goes he goes you've seen what I can do right because I told him I went up I said man I see some shit you can do yeah you he do, was we'll athletic do as fuck yeah he goes okay if I just call it the ring I said sure. Like that, and, and didn't set up nothing, didn't do anything. The rest is history. I mean, he was out of this world. Yeah. I mean, you, I knew he was a great worker, you know, as soon as I talked to him. Is it, and you know who else was smart? Yeah, oh no yeah. Doing that. He could do a moonsault. But 400 could, pounds, that's splash. He, yes, yes, he could do standing moonsault in the ring. Yeah. He did it out on me, he dropped the leg, he, he did the splash off the top, he, he did the cartwheel drop kick, he's super, I fed him for all that, and he kept me alive, you know what I mean? Sure, so sure. So then Waller. And this was in Memphis? Yes, yes, the old territory. I worked with him every night for a solid four weeks, six weeks, the next week my partner was David Haskins, you guys remember him? Oh, sure, I remember David, old He Haskins. was Davy Rich. Yeah, Davey yeah, Davy yeah. Rich. Yeah, and uh, uh Sorry about the new thing, just getting dressed. Hey, People do that when they're gonna rap. It's 2015, you know? I yeah, need to yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. it. Anyway, so, uh, I mean, he was great. Frank Morrell was referee. And I was ribbing Frank, I was willing him everything. I had all my ass ass, my savings, my dog, everything, you know. <laughs> I wasn't, I was ribbing him, I knew he was great. But uh, the next week, we're, uh, me and Pat Tanaka, or uh, Paul, Paul Diamond, against him. And then the next week, me and Paul Diamond, and then we did a thing like Davey, uh, I think Paul, Pat, myself all worked with him and had a match with, you know, kind of like they used to do Brock when they were building now, him up now with the Hardys. Now back then though, if I could st slow you down a second, was this weekly you'd work with Yeah, him? yeah, yeah. Memphis, Mummy, Louisville, Evansville, Louisville on Tuesday, Evansville Wednesday. Yeah. Louisville Gardens. Spot shows Thursday, Friday, TV, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Nashville. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was the loop back then. Yeah. Lawler, of course, didn't know, you know, where his temperament was. He came out of the ring and goes, how was he? I said, my God, I said, he's fucking great. I said, he's, he's, he, yeah, and, and Frank Morrell come back, and he's got, that's back when the Road Warriors were real sure, hot. Sure, sure. And Frank was like, I like him a lot better than the Road Warriors, because his is, he's he, not a muscled up guy, no. but that can move like that. Well, he know? was a, a football player, right? Yeah, yeah, he an amateur wrestler, yeah. a high school wrestler. Now, now. <coughs> and he was a leg breaker. A lot of people were scared. Yeah. yeah he worked for a loan shark yeah, or something, was, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, 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 let's go back to this, this involuntary manslaughter that you're saying. Now, so, so Bam Bam Bigelow killed somebody. He killed a guy in the ring. In the ring? No, not in the ring. I'm sorry. A bar fight. In a bar, bar fight. fight. So, I think do, it was do you a think, bouncer. I'm not do you sure. think it was uh, intentional and it got knocked got down? Fight. The guy yeah. jumped on him and fucked with the wrong guy. Wow. He sucker punched Bam Bam. That was it. I wouldn't sucker but punch But he wasn't Bam like Bam. that. He was a real nice. He never would work out or nothing. He could have been God. And then, uh, of course, the rest was history. He went around. Lawler did the thing in Evansville. And, uh, with him and where he did something and punched him. You know how Laura threw a great punch. Yeah, great punch. And bam, bam. And it's just what guys are missing, especially the big guy, to sell. Yeah. He, he just was so athletic. Laura hit him with that big, did some did that big punch. Bam, bam, Mike went, went, whoo, my cat and the people like, whoo, then, wait, wait, bam, bam. Sold it, but then didn't say, you know what I mean? The people just, whoa. It drew nothing but money. And then he beat Lawler all around the first loop, then it went up and up every week. And Lawler did the interview, saying that, you know, asking his mentor, Jim, I remember this great interview, which you never see Babyface do. He goes, sometimes there will be a guy that will tell you when it's over. You know what I mean? Sure. He goes, I don't know. He goes, maybe, you know, Bam Bam Bo will beat Jerry Lawler, but he can't beat the whole city of Memphis. When he talked about Louisville, the whole city of Louisville, the whole city of Evans, the whole city of Nashville, and sold out there. And that's how you do it, you know. Sure, it's more sure. More of that story. Larry was so great on the mic. The pretty as, boy. As such a, yes, and such a, uh, uh, his, his, his accent down south. Yeah, and South his, Jersey. Yeah, and he knew how to get heat. He was a great heel. Well, he was very uh, hateable. Larry yeah, Sharp. yeah, oh yeah, He yeah, didn't yeah. want to cheer for a guy like Larry No, Sharp. Larry was heat. Yeah, he was and, instant. And, and he was that blonde hair. And Larry, you know, Larry worked, you know, for Vince Sr. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, he worked Bruno time. in the garden. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Larry, people knew who he was. He worked uh, Carlos in Puerto Rico, came yeah. in in a helicopter and landed right in the yeah. Roberto Clemente yeah, Stadium. Yeah, Larry Sharp knew how to drew money. Yeah. He trained a lot of guys that made it. Now, now, so Bam Bam pretty much went to Memphis and then pretty much straight to Vince. No? He, he, he went to Memphis and he went to Dallas. He started going to New Japan. 
a lot when he was with Dallas, and he did some, I think, with Memphis. He came back, worked some for Memphis, somewhere in there, and, uh, uh, you know, I can't remember when, you know, and then he, uh, of course, went to uh, work for Vince, and uh, I, I don't know what the story was, but Andre roughed him up. Yeah, You know, yeah, I don't yeah. know what the deal was, you know. I saw in that Survivor And series. honestly, I think it really was a lot of people just jealous of him, you know how it is. But that's kind of, that's fucked up to me, Tracy, because here's Politics. this guy. Politics, of course, but they had him the, tagging with Hogan in the garden and other places yeah. on top with Hogan. You know what I mean? You know, with, against Dibiase yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and Virgil. Yeah, yeah. So, so does that to, to some of the guys who've been working 10, 15 years? Did they take offense to that? This guy comes in. He's he's a yeah. huge guy, yeah. known as a leg breaker, and right away yeah. he's with Hogan. Yeah. Does that does that make within, you guys within, mad? Within two years, didn't make me mad. I knew he was great. Yeah. I wasn't like I didn't you know. I always. But I mean, if you've been working for Vince for five six years, I mean that that, that chops some people's ass. I would imagine. No, oh, yeah, he came in. They put him on. I mean, Vince loved him. He was the beast of the East. You know, yeah. he's from there too. You know sure, what I mean? Sure. And 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 hey, can you give me a favor? I literally can't mm. lace my boots. My hips so bad. Can you put that in there? Give him a little help there. You do that to be my best friend in the whole wide world, track train. Now, how I can't lace my boot. Yeah. Okay. Have to try. I can't. This is history right here. I can't Freight do it, train man. My help is lacing so Tracy Smothers. Tracy boots. Smothers needs his boots laced, but he can't. That one boot, it's a motherfucker. It's like putting my sock on and more getting dressed. You know. How many miles? I got to plug Sandy's Pizza dot net. Sandy's Pizza on Facebook. The best pizza in what? The Midwest. Yes. Yes. In the world. In the world. I think I got a Sandy's Pizza shirt. Now, uh, how many miles would you say you got on those boots? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I just got them though. Uh, uh, Jeremiah Plunkett, got to plug him. He's oh, I know kid. him. He gave he uh, gave them to he me. He looks a little like Bam Bam without the tattoos. I couldn't get any place to get my where's my Sandy's shirt. What are you looking for here. Oh, oh know. man. Hey, where's the Cliff Compton shirt? I'll plug you. Uh, we got him over there. Are you, you stay here. Get one. Tell a little story. I, I, I can do the rest. Okay. You ain't got time, just that one. Yeah. Freight train laced my boots up. I literally cannot lace my boots. Who trained you, Freight train? Who trained me? You wrestle? Yeah. What size I got trained by large? different people. Okay. First, I got trained with Town Stadium. Then I was at PWL. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Style, is he still selling used cars? No, <laughs> they shut that place down where he was selling them at. Okay. You can keep that. That's Nobody a large. No, he's showing now. Hey, hey, I need mean, all the help I can get. You don't have an extra large? Uh, I got a double X. Can you, can, yeah, yeah, can we'll you do spare? a double X. Yeah, yeah, let me see that. I want you to be comfortable. Hey, thanks, man. You're all right. I don't care what everybody else said about you. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> hey, how much are they? Are oh, they free? No, how much are they? For being a guest, they're free. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to I was gonna pay you for it and call it a booking fee. Yeah, no. He booked me on this. I booked you. And Blue, Jake. Jake, what were you out there? You were a trooper or something? Yeah, Boy yeah. Scout. Boy Scout. <laughs> he leads the, he's the man scout. I told him, Mike, I said, I said look at Blue. <laughs> I, said, I said, he's a forest ranger or a park ranger. Cool. All right, let me unplug him. Now, I heard a story that Larry Sharp was supposed to be Oliver Humperdinck. Is there any truth to that? Oh, I didn't know that. Someone told me that Larry was I mean, supposed to be Oliver you, Humperdinck and manage Bam Bam. Yeah. But something fell through. I didn't know. I wanted to ask oh, you if you well, knew any idea. You know, I didn't know nothing about that. Uh, yeah. Was that Bam Bam's second run in there? That no, was his first run. That Hump was with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I knew Hump good. Now, now, are you a sports guy? Oh, yeah. So yeah. What, what was your take on when Bam Bam worked Lawrence Taylor at WrestleMania? Oh, man. Hey, uh, he Heart made him look like a million dollars, a didn't million. he? A million. I heard LT was blowing up within 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. LT told him after that, he goes, I can't do this. But LT was a wrestling fan growing up. Sure. You know? He grew up in the Carolinas, and, uh, and Bam Bam made him look like a million dollars. Uh, yeah, well, they paid him a couple uh, million bucks. Bam Bam, uh, uh, which I know they paid LT almost $2 I know this, when Bam Bam left New York, whatever happened that with him and Andre, I, I mean, I don't know, but I think there's a lot of guys jealous. I don't know, you know how it is. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, I was in Japan. Bam Bam come in for a big show and work Vader. They worked Yokohama. He did like 25,000. Big Van Vader? Yeah, yeah. And what a match, tore the house down. And, and Vader was in great, you know, good shape. Big, two big men two that giants. could work. They drew a lot of money together, working each other, and then they tagged them up, you know. And, and Bam Bam just he, he he taught Vader how to work. Really? You know what I mean? You know, you know how to get over and how to really so work. Bam Bam. But Vader was drawing Vader. money, but he was more a big monster killing. You know, but oh, Bam Bam had great psychology. Was, so would you say Bam Bam was a natural? Bam Bam was regarded as one of the biggest. Oh yeah, natural. Biggest, the greatest big man of all time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. And it was it was it was sad to no see doubt. to see what Hands happened down. to him. Yeah. You know, he's gone obviously. ECW, he got back going hard. He, he after that well T did it, Paul booked him ECW, did his trip threat, you know, he was boy. He got Van Dam over in ECW. You know what I mean? You know. He got Taz over, you know. And this is when and, you were in ECW yeah, doing the yeah, full blooded Italians. Yeah. And they just you know, he, he, everybody got with you know. He, he, he elevated uh, Shane, and, and, and Shane was up there anyway, you know, and elevated Candido, you know, and, and, uh, so, I mean, and then he got his big deal in uh, Atlanta, you know what I mean? WCW, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So he did pretty well. He made a great career. It just, unfortunately, he had, I, I would guess you would say I guess his demons. divorce and everything, and, 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 and I don't know, and I think he had some medical problems, took a lot of his money. His divorce took a lot of his money, and he got on, you know, and he was in Florida and had it wrecked. So would he say well, he's one of the one of the better guys you've come across in this business as far as big men go? Oh yeah, one of the best. Yes. Top five. Yeah, of course, Undertaker. You gotta Undertaker, say that. yes. You gotta say Undertaker. Undertaker's very tall, but Bam Bam's one of the, what I would yeah. call like you yeah. know like freight train. He's, he's yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. You know, yeah. bulky. Yeah, yeah. He wow. Was in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, what, now, we're, we're, I know Nashville, of course, Ever. is no. your home. Nashville. Well, you know, you are the king of Nashville. I live there. I live there. I know. I know. But seven, where are you? Eight, eight. Where is that? When you grew up? That area. Yeah. Yeah. Outside oh. of there. Because Danny Davis, uh, OBW really? Danny Davis, he told me he was working in Continental, and he used to see you in the crowd. No, it wasn't, it, it wasn't started, Continental. It wasn't Continental. It wasn't Continental. It was in Nashville. I was Nashville. a little kid, and I would pick strawberries, cut the back, and pick up hay for Mr. Perry. I work whatever he do. Who's Mr. Day. Perry? He, he would roll for me. Oh, just a neighbor. Big farm and Ricky Murphy and those guys, and they go to wrestling on Wednesday nights, and I'd jump in the truck with them. I'd be playing outside in the yard, and I'd sneak. And my mom, you know, they didn't want me to go. And Danny Davis, Ken, and uh, Ken uh, Wayne. Uh, no, Dream Machine. Uh, oh. Not Dream Machine. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Moon Dog Spot. Moon Dog Spot. Died. Where the B, uh, Wayne Ferris. Uh, Wayne Ferris. Danny Davis was Sergeant Danny Davis, Wayne Ferris, and uh, uh, Larry Latham, B-52 Blonde Bombers. And I would set up in the crowd and bomb them, man. Me and my friends were rocks. <laughs> we'd come out and pop them, man. And then, yeah, yeah, we'd give them hell. So you were throwing rocks at the Dan Danny Davis? Yeah, back then, man, the heels, they'd riot, you know, people riot. It wasn't no big deal, but people fighting in the crowd. Is stuff. this late 70s or? Oh, uh, yeah, I was like uh, eighth grade. Wow. Yeah, eighth, ninth grade. Phenomenal. Seventh grade. So when did you start actually wrestling? Ninth grade. I started when I was 21. I was just, I went to school two years college. Uh, I would see Steve Kern, Stan Lane, that's who trained me. In Florida? In the gym. No, in the, in the gym in Tennessee. The gym in Tennessee. Uh, Georgia, USWA, you know, it's Continental, whatever, CWA, whatever it's called. It's called a lot of things. Jerry Lawler, Jerry Jarrett owned it. Sure. I'd see uh, Steve Kern, uh, Stan Lane, fabulous ones. They were hotter than a firecracker. Bill Dundee, see him all the time. Bobby Fulton, who's there today, yep. see him yep. all the time in the gym. I see Carl Fergie, I see Bill, I said Bill, and I talk with him a lot. Steve knew how to school, and they trained me when they had time on Sundays, you know. So. And then they went to work for uh, AWA for Vince, or Benton Vince. So Vern Gagne went, did a big program with the Road Warriors. And, right. uh, and I stayed and, uh, you know, got some work. I worked some with uh, George Goose, his old thing with Tojo Yamamoto. And then Tojo so, got in with Jared, got me in. Originally, yeah. Steve Kern was your trainer? Originally? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, and that's early, I was early Steve 80s. Kern's first student. Really? Yeah. And that would be the early 80s? Yeah, I started wow. in 83. Now that, and now he, that, he started training in 82. Now, that was the, a lot of rock and roll going on in wrestling back then. It was quite yeah. the party scene. Steve yeah. Kern, Stan Lane were hotter than a firecracker. I'd ride with them to the shows, and I'm going to tell you what, they pull up to the shows, and it was like a daggum rock concert yeah, or something, yeah. man. It was crazy. And uh, the Rock and Roll Express, Waller put the gimmick on them. Kamal had already left them with the Louisiana. Bill had left them with the Louisiana. You know what I mean? Now, when you talk about, I'm sorry to cut you off, but Kamala's got to be up there as far as big men. Yeah, he's in there too. I was going to say Kamal was in there. As Very sad man. to hear oh, him yeah. with his recent yeah, health yeah, issues. Yeah, but he guy. was phenomenal yeah, at what he yeah, did, yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, all of them went to Louisiana, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, Terry Taylor went to Louisiana and, uh, uh, you know, things like that. And uh, Tojo got back in with the Jarrett's and they helped me. And I, I worked part time, had my old job loading trucks for three years, 83 to 86, where I went full time to Louisiana. Uh, and I worked with Louisiana six months, uh, or about a year for Bill Watts, you know, and uh, Buzz Sawyer. Buzz Sawyer, him? of course, yeah. I was working a lot with Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Dr. Death, of course. Uh, a tough guy. Real tough and, guy. Uh, uh, D 
Dick Slater, Jake Roberts. Jake was getting ready to go to the WWE. Wow. After, you know, so this in. is now we're in the mid-80s, would you say? 86. 86, 86. yeah, because that's when Jake started. Ter yeah. Uh, 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 Terry Taylor had took the book from Slater. Slater was still kind of helping him wow. with it. And, uh, you know, Buzz was there. As I said, Eddie Gilbert, Eddie Gilbert was Eddie great Gilbert, heel. hot stuff. They, and then uh, uh, the, the uh, Alto Warrior. Hellwig. Yeah, and then uh, 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 and Sting. They uh, uh, were working in Tennessee, and I worked with them some there. There were Blade Runners or Blade something. Runners, yeah. They brought them down there, and they turned. They put Eddie as a manager, and had him taking him to the ring, uh, you know, to work out in the ring and stuff. But also working, you know, for managing them. And, all. and uh, uh, I worked with Eddie a lot around the loop before he finished up kind of his work, and, and uh, uh, he he uh, was with them. Uh, Dick Murdoch was there, man. Dick Superstar. Murdoch, all of them. Yeah. So you were around some of the the all-time greats and just yeah. phenomenal yeah. workers. Now, yeah. now, what's your mindset? You know, it's the mid-80s. Oh, I'm going down there, and I hear that radio plug for Shreveport, and I'm hearing all them guys on the car. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, and uh, I can't remember who I worked with that night. I cannot remember. But I remember watching Eddie Gilbert and Terry Taylor pull the house down. Yeah. You know? I watched Jake and, and uh, Dick Slater. No, and it set nothing up in the ring or nothing. I can remember uh, Buzz coming and looking for Dr. Death. You know, and uh, I never, I'd heard about Dr. Death. You know what I mean? You know, Rick Steiner and Dr. Death. This is no lie. And I'm not named. Or I'm telling you, these things that happen. Of course, of course. They don't make people like that no more. Rick Steiner and Dr. Death in 1985. I'd heard about this. Where down there, there was, they were going, coming back from the show, and a lot of two lane roads down there, a lot of long trips. A car. You get some long trips. You want to get home. You know what sure. I mean? Get to gym, go to town. Well, that's kind of, you know, a lot of guys worked out of home every night. Worked either you lived in Alexandria or Baton Rouge. Cars on fire, wrecked on the side of the road. These two guys were young men, strong, training like animals. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where sure. Went and ripped the car door off. It saved the man's life. Wow. Later, a few weeks later, they got the guy came to Baton Rouge, and uh, they, you know, big so, press. You can look it up. You so can Google guy, it. And look it up on YouTube, whatever you want. It, it's it's on there. This happened, and and they were just like trying to get home. And they saw from the show, you know what crashed. I mean? You know, and they saw the car crash and just adrenaline. They ripped the car door off a burning car and saved the man's life. Wow! I don't know exactly how the story went, but that's... real life superheroes. Yeah. And these guys, I mean, back then, I mean, these guys were larger than life. So, oh, yeah. was everyone's mindset back then? Well, it's the huge wrestling boom at that time. Yeah. Was everyone looking to go to work in New York and work? For it was Vince just McMahon? starting. Vince was taking a lot of top guys out of all the territories and taking them to WWE. Yeah, yeah. He took Junkyard Dog already. You know what I mean? He was starting to get a few guys from Crockett. You know, and Crockett was on fire then. Sure, it was on fire. And uh, Rick Rude ended up going, and uh, a few more. I can't remember. So, Hyper and all boss those man, guys. Boss man. Oh, so now Hyper, we're a little. little Hyper had already went. A you know, little man. later '80s. Yeah, you're saying. yeah. Junkyard Dog and went from there. Jake so, was going when I was finishing up. I was joking about him doing a cartoon on him. You know what I mean? And Coco Ware ended up going. Coco on Beware, after. yeah. Uh, Duggan, I can remember being around Jim Duggan, making a trip with him, and he was talking about uh, Magnum. You know, was on. Remember when Magnum had the uh, uh, wreck? Yeah, Magnum. Remember TA, that? He Magnum, was on top TA. of the world, man. He was hottest yeah, ever in the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cripple. Uh, but anyway, before that, he was making big bucks. 1986, Jim Crockett Memorial Cup. All the guys were in there, and I remember traveling Duggan after that. He said. You know, uh, he was magnum with the checks he was what money he was making. Oh, crazy. And, he, and they were calling him then and he was loyal to Watts. Watts was paying him good, but he ended up not long after that left. And that was a big yeah. blow to the to, uh, mid south, you know. Do you think had had Magnum not gotten that accident he would have gone to work for oh, Vince man. and been just he was an stone cold. Star? Yeah, he was stone cold uh, uh, you know, way before. You In know the what I mean? 80s. You know, yeah. I mean, he was on belly to belly, quick, yeah. you know, good wrestler, good yeah. tough, good worker. So you believe had had, had, a look. had he not had that car accident, yeah, he would have. And been. the Magnum, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The show Magnum PI, yeah, uh, was big, and he looked like him, but he was rough. He did look like did, him. You know, you know what I mean? He wasn't a, uh, he, he had real hairy. You, you remember him? You grew yeah, up watching him, right? Of course, yeah. yeah, he was, he was on top. What are some of your thoughts on Magnum TA train? I think he was a good wrestler. Yeah. I used to watch him and Rick Flair go at it all the time. Yeah. They're back in the 80s. They had his picture on a Mountain Dew soda can. Really? Yeah. That's old. Did the, did the video with his mom, you, You're My Hero, you know, yeah. all that. You know, Dusty Boy, he, he, he. Barry was on top, top baby face. Barry went Barry got a check he didn't like. 
Barry got hot quit. That's just how Barry was. Went to New York. You know what wow. I mean? Yeah. Went to New York and him and Mike were trying to did the, you know, and then he, Dusty had to have a top baby face and he just they said Dusty put a poster up Mac just thinking what can I do? Was getting a quick wins with that belly to belly, you know what I mean? You know, so as a shoot good because he was a wrestler, you know, you know, and he had oh. to look. Now you say Barry gets a bad check. This is what the show's about. Are we supposed to be Barry and wrestling? No, and we're just talking. We're just talking. <laughs> we're just talking. No, no, let me, let me get this straight here. You said, I rest, I rest. I'm winning that battle roll, son of a bitch. I know. It's a $20,000. I have 20 grand, man. I'm getting there. That's almost anyway. what you're getting for this show. By God. Yeah. Uh, now you say Barry got a Good bad back. check. Do you mean one check or he was getting a series of bad checks? That I don't know. I mean, I mean, what do you think a bad check He wasn't was? happy with his money. So obviously then he just said, fuck you, I'm going to go work I for Vince? Yeah, I think he should quit. I think wow. he walked out. I'm not sure. I don't know. I met Barry. He's I, a very can, nice man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Boy, so a great worker. Great he was. Great. But he busty was, you know. Big going. man. I think maybe Barry had already done his first run and then come back. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. I think, yeah, I believe that was what it was. Barry had worked up there for us. Him and Mike went around. Then he came back, worked with Dusty, and then he went back. I think that's when later on he did the Widowmaker. Remember sure, that? sure. I think that was the Widowmaker. Widowmaker. They had to make Mac. That was a great you name, know, the yeah. Widowmaker. Yeah. I always thought. Yeah. Okay, so Style worked in there. Style George South yeah, worked every night, man. Oh yeah. I've never seen Style. George South had more gimmicks than I ever seen. George South, I've ever seen my head work. George South worked five times on the show. Five right. times. He's walking around today, too. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, I thought, said, George, you walked 10 miles today. He's a workhorse. Now, what are you doing while this is going on? What's Tracy Smothers doing around 1988, 89-ish? Um, this is, I, know, was, uh, I was still I said, working at USWA. Uh, 86, uh, about uh, early summer, 86, went back to Tennessee. That's when Bam Bam came in. Uh-huh. And I worked there till about February of 87, went to work in Florida for uh, uh, Mike Graham. Uh, Hero Matsuda. Hero. Kevin Sullivan saw him today. Kevin Sullivan put the gimmick on Steve Armstrong and myself. Now, Matsuda trained Hogan. Yeah. 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 Tough guy. Tough guy. Shooter. Oh, yeah. Oh, and uh, uh, guy. Kevin Sullivan gave us the gimmick, uh, the Wild Eye Southern Boys. Put us with a new breed. You guys remember them? Yeah. Nobody had the Boys. haircut like them either. So wait, back hold, hold on a second. For the audience here, we have a huge audience. The, who gave, the wild-eyed Southern boys came from Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan. Wow. Whole gimmick was Kevin Sullivan. Every bit of it. He called me up, and back in you didn't have all that. I just had pictures and word of mouth. Pat Tanaka had got me in. Uh -huh. His father was Duke Komika, who was in with Matsuda, part owner of Mike Graham, of course, you know. And uh, they called me up, and, and Kevin says, "This is Kevin Sullivan." And he says, "Tracy, he goes, Luke Williams, Sheep Hutter, uh, Butch." Miller, uh, talk highly of you, Pat Tanaka. We hear you're a good boy. He said, we want to put you with Steve Armstrong and call you the Southern Boys. Right there, right? And, and he said, do the Rebel gimmick. I had no idea what it was all, you know. And, and I said, sure. So when do I start? It's on the telephone. Wasn't no cell phone, wasn't no computer, no, wasn't no, no texting, wasn't no Facebook, no Twitter. Twitter, blue. You know, it no, wasn't any of that. No right? Vine videos. None of that stuff. Nothing. I said, when do I start? He told me I wrote it down on the calendar, you know. You know, you know what I mean? I didn't put it in my phone or, you know. And you would take the map out to find the town. Fucking right. Some man. of these kids today, Tracy, they don't even know what a fucking map is. Hey, I can't use a GPS. Really? I'm in the 80s. I'm not leaving. I can get on a computer. But you know the highways and yeah. stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I'm on the map. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I religious. last night my dog chewed up three or four of on my map getting down here. What kind of and, dog uh, you got? Oh, she's half golden retriever, half raw, oh, full that's blood a, goat, bitch. We did anything. That's a big dog. Diva. But I, from Missouri to Ohio was, was two dollars a month. Right? You know? I, I'm gonna, I mean, I what, what would you guess that Tracy Smothers' name, the dog, his dog's name is, if you had to freight train? What would you say? I don't know. She'll call her Chewy. 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 Ruthie. Yeah. Ruthie. Close. Ruthie. Yeah. Chewy. Hey, Ruthie's the love of my life. I don't fuck around on her. <laughs> I don't, man. Damn, I lost my uh, my Tic Tacs. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe we can get some. We got mints on the table oh, right awesome, here. Man, thank you. Take, one, man. take one of these mints here. I get dragon breath. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Talking shit. Yeah, talking yeah. shit. That's but, happens. Uh, when you shit talk, you get shit breath. Yeah, crap. man. But uh, I so, worked. Okay, now we're, you know, we're approaching the 90s. I worked about six months to a year. So I got there in Florida, come back into Tennessee. And uh, 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 Crockett was uh, wanting to bring us up, Dusty was. And it was kind of going down there, they're going to put us on the beach show working Midnight Express because the new breed, they brought them up. We were working them in Florida, then we worked the Mod Squad, remember them? Mod Squad, of course. Good teams. And we worked the Midnight Express a few times in St. Pete, 
Uh, and uh, then we went up and worked them in Baltimore and Greenville and a few places. And uh, Dusty was going to put us on the B shows. Did Steve want to go home? She now, promises Dustin Kafu we didn't go. Who was main event in the B shows? Uh, well, at one time, rock and roll was, and they were drawn as good as the A shows. Who was main event in the A shows? Dusty. Dusty. Of course. Who else? <laughs> you know, but uh, um, we didn't go. And uh, so I went back to Tennessee. I'm cutting the back. I'm working on the farm. Can't get a job. For Mr. Perry? Because I thought I was going into Continental. But then the rockers, Robert Ford, they got fired from New York. Remember that? They got fired. Something happened. I don't Who, know. Who's this now? Midnight Rockers. The Midnight Rockers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rock. And Robert Ford was booking it and brought them in instead of Steve was in there working. They were going to bring me in, but brought them in, you know, because they were they were available, you know, and they were right off the uh, on the ESPN TV. Of course, sure. great workers, sure. you know, obviously, you know, phenomenal. Right? But uh, uh, so they brought them in, and I was thought I was going to Continental, and then they wouldn't book me in Tennessee because. They thought it was going to be uh, for that a month or so before I go to Continental. Then I didn't get a job there. And then I was cutting back, and Jerry Jarrett called me, and uh, he knew what I was doing, you know. And I said, "Fuck it, I'm going back. I'm finished college. Fuck it. I'm, yeah, fuck it, man. Fuck sometimes it. you just right, got fuck it. Sometimes yeah, you just right. got to say, what the fuck, train? What, really what, really what the fuck, train? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Look at the camera and say, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Fuck it, man. Fuck it. Fuck it, man. Sometimes you just got to say, fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, so I'm at home and I'm working on a farm. I'm picking up. Is this Mr. Perry still? No, Ricky Murphy, I'd move oh, up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd moved up. I don't know. They're all talking shit because I'm blowing up in the tobacco field. And the hell. I ain't done that shit in years, you know. And <laughs> I got sick and all that. You know, and oh, God, man. I'm like, oh, big bad rash or motherfucker, you know. And I started getting my grade. And you were a big and, guy. So back then you were probably even bigger, right? I was bought up, man. I wasn't used to working in I went to college and played sports to get out of work. And, and <laughs> but I, two day practices in high school, we'd cut the back and pick up hay between practices. My dad said, I was like, Crazy. Throw water then, on me. He's crazy. He so wait, you're this athletic guy, and you and you're going to in the tobacco fields, and you're the blowing up. 1987. Oh yeah, Jeez. talking shit about me. And I'm at home one day, and I, and I was you know starting to get back in tobacco shape, you know, farm shape. Tobacco. Shape. Jerry Jarrett calls me up. He goes, "What are you doing?" I said, "We think I'm doing." You know, and he says, "You working on the farm still?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "You can come back and work for me." I said, "I don't know, man." I said, "I may just go back and, and finish college and just coach." Because I was kind of being groomed to be a wrestling coach, football coach at my school, you know. Where, where were you going to college? I went to Carson Newman College for okay. football and wrestling. Just nice. Football. And I quit. I didn't go after my second year. I didn't want to walk home and play University of Tennessee. Met the fabulous one, Steve Stan. I didn't, didn't go back. But, uh, had heat from the family. Wow. And it was, I was going to go back to college. Get, you know, so the family education. wanted you to go the normal yeah. route in life. Yeah, go back to get college. Get an education. Go back to college. Maybe be a lawyer. Yeah, I was going to go to do- summer Dr. school. Or Dr. Smothers, possibly. I was going to go to summer school in 87. And, and Jerry Jarrett was like, well, I said, that's what you want to do. He goes, I got a spot for you if you want to come back. And I said, well, I said, can I call you tomorrow? Let me think about it. And he said, yeah. And so I went back and worked in the field all day. And I just looked around. And I said, man, I am not doing this all. I want to coach, but I do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and the next day I called him you know, went back to work. Uh, Nasty Boys, remember them? Yeah, Knobs and Sags. Yeah, they were in there working, and, uh, uh, you know, that was their first full-time job. They worked Croc or Vern, Kurt, or Kern? Not Kern, uh, 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 Brad Renigan's training. Wait, Kern, how did you get Kern confused with uh, Kern, uh, they, he, they were always around him in Florida. Oh, okay, I'm just, t- I'm just messing with um, you. 32 concussions. I know. Tell, you know 32. 11 many strokes. There's How other many stats. Strokes? Wait, strokes? 11. Mini TIAs. What's a mini stroke? TIA mini stroke. Wow. That, I'm sorry. It's not good. I hope I'm have, sorry, too. I hope you don't have one on the show. Nah. We know CPR, and we got a defibrillator over there just in case. Damn, yeah, other than that, I'm all right. But if you have a stroke, you know what we're going to have to take that. An take large that. heart, maybe. You we know. take your payback, though, if you die on us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Right, but, train? Nobody huh? Nobody. We take his payback if he dies on us. But fuck yeah. it, train. Fuck, fuck it. Take it back. Fuck it, fuck it man. Fuck it, man. Yeah, that would be fucked up right now. One more time. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. 
What fuck it, that'd be fucked up. But I mean, that's the business. Pay. That happens. You work hard, you work sick. It's yes. just, it yes. ain't ballet. Everybody thinks they don't understand, you know. Uh-huh. And and working with a lot of big guys that you see, you know, that knock your dick in the dirt. But you these were I mean? these were giants fun. back then in the eighties. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, today you you'd be considered a huge guy. I work, yeah, I worked with Sid when he was huge. Started Jesus. from Undertaker. Uh, remember, uh, 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 he was uh, uh, tugboat. 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 Remember Goliath, big guy Goliath. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. God, yes. All yes. Those guys, man. Kevin Nash, Fred Ottman. That's that's Scott Hall. You know when he's yeah. young, stronger yeah. than hell. Now these are all six. Ron Simmons. You know what I mean? Ron a lot Simmons. of brutes like that. Yeah, Steiner's, damn. Steiner's yeah. suplex. We hear that like they <laughs> would when they were young. But I mean, these but, were. Ju- I mean, you're not a small man. You were going man. four, five, six, seven nights a week. Jeez. You know what I mean? You know, like that. Cool. And uh, you know, it, it just took a toll. It's you know. I mean, the kids today, they go maybe once, twice a week, and, yeah. and they're all in the back putting the spots yeah, together. Yeah. Back then, We're separate travel rooms, yeah. separate, the whole deal. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you think about the, today's wrestling? I mean, you're not a guy to knock it, but it's just different, wouldn't you say? It's a different generation. Well, yeah, yeah. Everything's different. It ain't just wrestling. Look at football, pro basketball, baseball. Everything's elevated. The Look guys at are movies. bigger, stronger. Everything's CGI now, and yeah. a lot of more special effects. And, yeah, you and know. And, and, so, and, so, do you and, think and, wrestling has has to change with the times? It just has to. I think this is my things that you'd see, and you can see it when you watch. And tell me if I'm wrong, but when I watch a guy like uh, uh, Cesaro, sure, and Dolph Ziggler, Dolph when you Ziggler. watch them in the ring working, they're dancing. Yeah. They can work. It's not yeah. robotic. I don't mean it bad toward nobody. No. But they've worked other styles. They've worked other places other yeah. than just WWE. They're good. I'm not trashing what they do in the performance center, but like like Punk, Daniel Bryan, right? You see what I mean? You know? Yes. And they think, and they, they, they work so many different styles, they're well-rounded as a worker. They're not one-dimensional. And their interviews, if you watch, it's not, yeah, they tell them what to say, but they're going to get their points across. You can't memorize. You know, it looks too robotic, and to me, scripted, it just don't, it's not it, showing emotion. It comes across as bad acting. Yeah. You know, not not to disrespect. They got every us. word and say what some guy writes Days of Our Lives or As the World Fucking Turns or whatever the fuck they do. They don't have people. Am I right? I mean, that's yeah. just, you know. Yeah, As the World Turns off of TV. <laughs> Thank yeah, you for yeah, that. They got real. They the got him like. That was my favorite soap opera. Which yeah. one? The guy like the guiding light. I like the oh, young yeah. and the restless. Yeah, I was a young and the restless guy too. Young yeah, but the young and the restless still doing good. But yeah. can they freight train right wrestling? Hmm? Can no. they write wrestling? No, they, write wrestling? they can't write wrestling. They won't have wrestling on daytime soap opera on the guy like. They had boxing that time when Reba Shane is Kim Zemma and Josh Lewis <laughs> as Robert Newman yep. was in the rain box with each other with Ross Marta was the ranger announcer Jerry Von Dern. Who yeah. would have known that Freight Train was a soap fuck opera it, historian? Man. Fuck, fuck, it, fuck, that, fuck it, man. That fucking Freight. That is awesome, <laughs> man. I want like to live back fuck in it, the day back in the 80, 1988 on one like to live. I remember Coy was in the wrestling ring, wrestling against somebody. I forget who it oh, was. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, I mean, in the 80s, nobody came up to you with a script and no, said, Tracy, we no. want you to say this, this, Look. this. They, well, they just say, okay, you got 30 seconds, promote Evansville, go. Exactly. Yeah. And you knew the points, what you'd done the week before there, what you'd done on TV. You talked about what had happened. Yeah. And did. Sure, the booker would come and he'd say, hey, get these points across in your own words. This is what I want. Say it how you want to say it, how you feel comfortable mm-hmm. doing it. Everybody has their own style to do, you know, and, and if it looks like you go, well, uh, this, this, other, blah, 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 blah you know, it's like, it doesn't come off. Mm-hmm. And I'm not knocking anybody, say, I'm just telling like, you, then I'm like, fuck it, man. Fuck it, man. Fuck it, man. You were you Fuck were very it. intense in promos. I remember that. I remember watching one of yours, <laughs> and you it felt so real to me because at the end, you called the guy. Uh, you know, it's, it starts with an F and it ends with a T. You use the word a lot. Fucked hard. No, no, close. I'm going further than that. When I strip you naked, I'm gonna beat you senseless, and I'm gonna whip your butt like your mama should have done a long time ago when you turned into a fag. Okay, we got. I got a lot of trouble for that. Too. Do, do you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. You called. You said Memphis. Yes, exactly. Memphis TV. T- take us through the faggot promo. Memphis TV. T- boy Tony. Remember Boy George? 
Boy, Tony, they had him hot as a hill. He working was. with him underneath. I was working mid, mid, mid-card mid thing with him, you know what I mean? And you were this and, and, and young, fiery baby, baby face. face. Yeah. I mean, you were, you and, were and, and, ripped and, fucking heads up. You were saying, fuck it back then. And, 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 and piss and vinegar. Yeah. Woo! Right. Hey, right. hey, but uh, um, uh, wrestling pose. Uh, uh, <laughs> but we done something that day on TV with the baby face with the heels left me laying. Tony left me laying. I've seen this. Recently. I'm working live. It's live Memphis TV way before Monday night. Uh, it was 1986, and uh, uh, way before uh, you know they were doing live Monday night Raws, live anything Memphis TV in that whole area. About 500,000 people watching right then. No dub, t- no takes, no editing, nothing. And the, the heels had left me laying. I'm doing a fired up interview to wrestle the boy, um, Pike Boy Tony that yep. night. Yep. And he'd keep beating me and screwing me. The whole place chanting, bag it, bag. Back then, Boy George was hot. Remember Boy George? A lot of heat. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great heat. It was, he had good heat. And the whole and crowd Tony was a good worker. Like Tony was the ball. He trained Jeff Jarrett. Wow. Yeah. Okay. He did. But and Jeff's first match with program was with him. But anyway, um, I always had a job, but it's great. I learned a lot from Tony, and uh, and he let me land. And just doing a fired up t- inter- interview yeah, in the heat of the great. moment, live TV, and I and I said something. I said, uh, and I said, I said, and by God, I said, you know, I'm gonna this out and do something when they did this as a bag or something. Yeah. Two things wrong. Say, I said, by God. Oh yeah. Bag. Two, I two no-nos. went back to the Dave Brown look and Lance Russell. They clipped everything and look, and my heart just went to my knees. I thought, oh God, I'm done. I've quit college, everything. I put three years into this. I'm finally getting, a, a, you know, somewhat a push in the business and trying to get my name out there. Three years of busting my ass, you know, quit college. My family just mad at me. You know what I mean? You know, but everything. You were- all in that moment right there, and I got back here, and they were going off on me. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Law, everybody. We may lose people. were calling in. Over now, God over was, God that. was, was, was. No way could you say by God. God. By God. God was. But no way. By God, yeah. And then you said fag. Yeah. Which is even worse. Even worse. So you, you hit him because the boy George thing was a, was a really. They were pushing oh, the envelope with yeah. the boy. You know, with the queer, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the fag, the bisexual, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Well, you know? Sure. And you just couldn't. And I thought I was blackballed from the whole business. And I, I did not mean mm-hmm. to do that. I just, you were caught you know, up in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but I, I was that just was like, an intense like, promo. Yeah. I was like, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. They go, sorry, don't get it. That's live. We can't edit it. Of course, they did around the loop when it did. But they're live, for, and it was it was set, Jonesboro that night in Memphis Monday night. I said, by God, tomorrow tonight. Now that's in a, Jonesboro, if not tonight in Jonesboro, it's Monday night in Memphis. You know what I mean? You know? But now, what happened? What were the were there any repercussions? Did, they didn't cut the push or anything on you, did yeah. they? Oh, they did. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> now, <laughs> they did. They had me lose a Tony around, and then I was a maid for him, and they did an interview uh, a video of me. Uh, uh, sweeping his house with an apron on, oh, and no. me uh, washing his dishes, and uh, I put, feeding him and giving him his breakfast, and I put a bunch of uh, Clorox in there, and he really ate it. He got sick. He really did. Jesus. And as dog Pierre come in, and I hit the dog with I got over his leg. So I like, swatted at him with it. No. Like, get out of here. It's like I hit it. Now people can see this. It's on YouTube. If you YouTube, yeah. uh, the, Tracy Smothers it, says fag. It, it comes right you, up. You remember Virgil, of course, right? Yeah, of course. He was Soul Train Jones. He worked around the loop with Tony. They were pushing him big as Soul Train Jones. Yeah, big yeah. Baby. And I was in Tony's corner as his maid, and I caused Tony to lose every night. So, mm-hmm. But then it kind of ended it. So okay, now everybody was out of there not long after that. Too. So they were. Ma- so <laughs> they, they got a lot of complaints lot of on the network, probably. Yeah. Probably Memphis, Channel off. 5 TV, yeah. That was yeah. the Bible Belt. You couldn't be saying yes. those things. Yes, Woo-wee. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so that happens, and that's kind of like, okay, I've learned my lesson. Now, now let's get to the 90s here now. There's something you did that everyone knows you did, and I probably am the biggest mark in the world for and I'm trying to do it myself, but PETA and these other activists will not fucking allow it. All right? You wrestled a bear. A yeah, real... I- Bear. I wrestled three different bears. Jesus Christ. One was a 750-pound uh, black bear with ginger. Well, no, no, no. Let me stop. The ginger one. is a famous wrestling oh, bear. Yeah. Let everybody know. Ginger the original work for the Pafos. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, this was a guy, and he had a bear, yeah. and he would bring it to all... They, now, I was to told, bars, too. Yeah, I was told when a the town was down, if a town was down, to pop the town, they'd bring yeah. in the bear. Yeah, bar, too. Bar two. Bar two. Really? Oh yeah. So take us to let's let's go through the first time you ever wrestled a bear. 
I was in junior college and I was, junior I was college. transferring over. Uh, I wasn't even in the business and I was wanting to get in the business kind of, but I was in uh, Ball State. I'd done Carson Newman. I was wanting to go to UT. I had to go a couple quarters there and I was going to go summer and transfer over to UT. I wanted to walk on play at University of Tennessee. Uh, at Murfreesboro, they said a bear was going to be down there, Ginger, and I knew who it was. You know the I mean? wrestling bear. Yeah, yeah. But I was, I was a sophomore in college. And, uh, Ginger was a black bear? Yeah, okay. 750 pound black bear. She was old. She had a muzzle on her. That guy had a cattle prod. And, uh, wow. Yeah, I've told this on Colts podcast. Okay, podcast. that's all podcast. right. This is a whole podcast. other audience. Podcast, podcast. A cold cast. Not a podcast. Cold cast. Fuck it, cast. Fuck it, man. Fuck it. Fuck it, man. Right. Fuck it. Fuck, Fuck it. Fuck. fuck it, man. Come fuck it. Fuck it, man. You got to stick this up, this ballad, and then <laughs> this is the right here. Yeah, we're going now. Fucking freight train, man. So you, yeah. you gotta sell shirts says fucking freight train. Yeah, I might make that one make day. One day. Said so, fuck it, freight train. Clip Compton. Say freight train. Clipcompton.net or dot com. Dot net. Okay. Pro <laughs> wrestling, pro wrestling. But anyway, are. anyway, so they that was going on. They said, and I said, sure, man, let's go. I had uh, uh, so we loaded up the car, went two, three carloads, go down there in Middle Tennessee State University. The old football team was there. The guy says, he says, do not tackle this bear, do not punch this bear. He said, if you do it, turn him loose on. He had a muzzle. I know, he said, but get I'm... a sign of waiver. He said, if he gets you down, he says, put your hands in front of your face because he's trying to bite you. But I'm confused. Like, did, was there an open challenge or yeah. something? Yeah. So, so you t- accepted the open challenge? Well, I watched this guy, the big boy. He was all OBC. Ohio Valley Conference uh, offensive lineman, big boy. He's the first one that went in there with the bear. And he, like, went and he tried to tackle that bear. You know what I mean? He, like, went broke down a stance and was trying to be Billy Bat. Everybody, ah, you know, all that. I'm going, oh, shit. And, boy, when he did that, this is what that guy did. That guy goes, he goes, that, that cattle prod, he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. He hit that, he hit Ginger, and Ginger, like, took the guy down. Leg dived, leg dived him so fast, the guy it, it took his legs out from under. The guy was coming low, like coming off the ball, took him down so fast, the guy hit the back of his head on the on the concrete, busted Jesus. his head open, and he went down on you know to bite him and broke his nose. He busted his head up, blood was going everywhere, it broke his nose, I thought it killed him. I mean, like that. But he you signed know, a waiver. Signed so. a waiver, we all signed a waiver. You know what Tracy did? Tracy took a run. To his car. <laughs> and I said, no, fuck it. They're all tackling me and running. We're all laughing and joking. They're all drinking. I didn't even drink that. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I was drinking orange juice. I was all pumped up, eating, eating orange, eating pumped protein up. bar, and ready to go. Eat orange. And, uh, yeah. And the whole deal, you know, that I saw, I went, no, fuck that. I'm out of here. <laughs> I took off. They're like, no, no, you got to do it. So four, five, six other guys did it. I just stayed on the defense with you know what I mean? I went three three-minute rounds with the bear and just stayed away from him and, and Ginger. Ginger was the toughest wrestling bear. There was three different wrestling yeah. bears. Might have been more than that. So now he, it's muzzled, obviously, but is yeah. it declawed or no? Yeah, he's declawed. Declawed. He's muzzled. He has teeth. He's, he's trying a, to bite you. Is he on a chain or not on a yeah, chain? Yeah, he's on a chain. And there's this guy who will take a cattle prod yeah, and yeah. give him a jolt, yeah. which pretty this much is 1982, fucks 82, you. 83. Oh, yeah, 82, I guess. Oh and then last God. time I did it was in 86. Remember Chavo Guerrero, DJ yeah. Peterson, remember him? God rest his soul, yeah. DJ Peterson. But you did a, a uh, famous one where Gordon Soley commentates. That was in 89. 86, okay. I did it was seven foot, 2,000 pound brown, uh, Alaskan brown bear. Jesus. Or Grizzly, I don't know what it was. Seven foot, 2,000 pound, that's what I know. Remember that. Was the Nick better? Adams, Nick Adams had it. Well, no, I was working mid-self for Watts. And, and we worked Alex at night, and I'd worked the show, and everybody was out there, Terry Taylor, Doug in, all them guys with the wives and everything. And, and all that, and I, and I was an expert, and I never drank beer in my life. And Chavo, Chavo Guerrero, you know, he was like spiking it, man. He was spiking my, and he was putting shots in there, putting the beer in my beer. Tequila. Tequila. And I didn't even know it. I drank one beer. I go, man, I'm trash. I never know. And then he was to give me shots, but I was an expert. I go, no, no, all them guys are going. I was going to dress nice, had my fever on, thought I was cool. Thought it was cool, right? Trying looking for yeah. bitches, single, you know, the deal. You know, <laughs> bitches. looking for hoes, you know, you know, talking shit, you know, thinking I was Tracy Travolta, you know, on the floor, throwing down and talking, I'm talking all that shit. You're looking and I'm for going, bitches, Tracy yeah, looking, looking for bitches. Looking for bitches. Money over bitches. Mind on my money and my money, money on my, my mind. mind. Rolling down the street, <laughs> smoking in North City. Slipping on gin and, and juice. Lay back. back. My mind. To my mind, to my mind, to my mind. <laughs> yeah. That's it.
Snoop Dogg over here. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Right. train, man. <laughs> hey, but but uh, uh, yeah, I was all that, and I was an expert. I go, no, man, you got to be on the defense. That bear, he's just playing. But, you know, I was talking all this like I knew everything. And Chavo was taking it all in. Peterson, they're big rivers. I look up, number seven. They don't like to uh, wrestle no more than six, seven, eight guys because it gets kind of play around. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, from Mid-South Wrestling, young man trying to make a name for himself in Mid-South. From Springfield, Tennessee, I was like, no, man, no. I was talking to three girls, I had it going on, man. You know, and I said, no, man, you're killing my play. You're killing my play. So you know? You're trying and to get laid. Yeah, they're calling you to wrestle yeah the so I got my fever on. I got old, nice clothes. And, and, uh, <laughs> nice I, clothes. I try to get out of there, they wouldn't, you know, and the whole deal. And I get in there, and, 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 and it's Ted, not Ted, I can't remember. And Nick Adams is buried, Nick's dead. And uh, um, and Nick had worked in the business. So he had the chair, I had raised him from the cup. So I'm around with him, and he's just leaning on a blowed up, and I had on my damn bear to rip my clothes off and everything, you know. <laughs> and I'm trying to get away from him and do. And, and I come in and I sit out, coming from somewhere, my head went right in his stomach. And when I did it, bear went Urgh! and and just cinched, you know, and just my body just it went from playing around to being mad. Yeah. And my yeah. body just like went, whoa, and it's just like a baby with a. With a, no. with a man, I punch him. Get this motherfucker off of me! And it's like a baby hitting a man. And 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 Nick Nick went up and grabbed him and put it around his neck. Got really rough, hard playing. And he went right to him playing with him. I was trying to get out of the ring, and a bear. It's amazing how quick they can move. Sure. He's at one turnbuckle, and I'm almost at the other. At the corner of my eye, I saw him, and that bear lunged at me, and I lost ten years. I crapped my pants. Shit my pants. You shit your pants. Shit my pants. I did. I got out of the ring and did. I was blowed up, sweat. And did sports and I had my sweats and stuff on board at the show. And I went into the bathroom, got my sweat, you know, and all that, and cleaned off and did went to the bar and was blowed up. So you didn't get laid that night, did no, you? No. I'm sorry. Everybody talking shit to me. Yeah. The third time was uh, uh went, was in eighty nine, Gordon Sullivan. Yeah, now this went, is amazing. Is it was that ginger or no? Uh, that was Ted. Okay. Because Siberian grizzly bear, you, 550 pounds, 10 months old. Yeah. Wendell oh. Cooley was working Dutch Mantel, Zeb Coulter. Sure, sure. Dutch, dirty uh, Dutch. Uh, what, and uh, Wendell didn't want to wrestle that bear. And Wendell had a knee injury in Prattville, Alabama. He's working a program with Dutch, chasing for the belt. Dutch saying, hey, sign the thing, whatever. He goes, I'll sign anything. All he's doing is bring the bear out to TV, you know. And really, the bear's kind of a baby face. And Drew, but not like it could have been better than the bear than the baby face. But then Wendell couldn't do the show because of uh, his knee. So I'm working a tag match, Steve, myself, Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden. And then, so I worked that tag match. Then I worked, I worked the bear three nights in a row I did this. I worked three three-minute rounds. What you saw on YouTube was only the third of three rounds and the oh, first okay. of three nights. Okay. And then I worked with Dutch. I worked three times. The first night, I'm sitting there, and I didn't know what this bear would do. I played around with him some in the back. It's a young, bear. 10 months old, 550 pounds. It, it gained 100 pounds in a month after that. Jesus. And I'm, I didn't know what he was going to do, so I'm sweating. I'm there, and I'm actually praying, you know. And and I'd work the tag match. If I get through with the bear, I didn't know if I could or not. The main event was me and Dutch working with his belt, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. that, and the storyline, if I'm blasted with the bear, I'm sitting there going, what in the world am I going to do? How do I get into this? I told them I'd do it. They knew I'd done it. Worked out a deal money wise, it's worth it. Do it, help my gimmicks. You know what I mean? You know the deal. You know the deal. Know the deal. Fuck, Fuck it. it. Fuck it. But uh, uh, so that uh, uh, I'm getting ready to do it in the ten o'clock. It's gonna be on ten o'clock news. That's what that was. Sure, know? sure. And Joe Pettisino, if you remember that name, I he, know the he name. taped that and everything. Well, uh, uh, they were trying to portray it as as, as animal cruelty. That's what the I was Humane ask Society, you. Yeah. the World Wildlife Fund, and all of that was all over it. And I was hearing my music playing. I turned around and they were going to interview me. And the Humane Society woman was there. And the newscaster lady says, Hey, don't you think it's inhumane to wrestle bear, Mr. Smothers? This, this other dude. And I looked and I go, I said, Look, I said, I do this three nights in a row. I smart them up. You know, we're doing the same thing. He didn't do that back then. And it went okay, babe. She, you know, let's well, just get started. But uh, I said, I said, Look, I said, I don't know why you worry about the bear. I got to work twice and wrestle this bear. Why don't you worry about me? And I went to the ring. They didn't show that. So in the late so, 80s, people were protesting. I was in cruelty. bed for three days after that, and back and forth my home in my jacuzzi. And all I could do was shower. Jacuzzi? Lay in the pool with my feet up. You know what I mean? You know, pool. Shower. You were doing pretty good for yourself back then. And, 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 and jacuzzi. I had on my deck. And, and I was uh, back at, you know, it's all, for three days, I was exhausted. No, no, you actually headlock takeover, I believe, this bear. How do you do something like that? 
Hey, the, the first night wasn't as bad. The one, uh, uh, I, I did that or something, I did the bear swatted me, hit me the car bone, yeah, still bad. Yeah, yeah. It really is, and it hit me, it just swatted me with its, its uh, you know, paw, it just, just playing. And I thought I broke my car, but I went, and it just took all my, my heart, everything. I looked at Steve, I said, Steve, I'm getting out of here. And he goes, you ain't got paid yet. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're right. So that's when I jumped out over it and then did that, yeah, messing yeah, around. Yeah. And then, it was and then unbelievable. The second, go behinds. The second night, uh, uh, I, you ain't supposed to get, you know, jump on the bear's back or nothing. Steve goes, hey, I'm jumping on the bear's back. And I says, I, I, no, I said, Steve, draw him, I'll jump on his back. So I did it, my grandma bear chased me all over the ring, man. He chased me off. And then the third night, Dutch had him so wound up, I couldn't get in the ring for 15 minutes. Unbelievable. Because I've tried. We've we've looked into me wrestling a it's bear. It's outlawed. Yeah, they, it's outlawed. You can't do it. He does all Cause over they, it. Because, yeah, uh, uh, that bear and the other two that wrestled, not Ginger, they had their teeth. All they had was their back teeth, which you can't bite you with. Yeah. And it had their claws declawed, and that's just So it's, it's kind of a work, what but it's still I don't want to mess up but, 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 the battle royal thing. What time is it? This is three fifty nine. Really, we're doing good. Yeah, yeah. great, great. All right, all right. So all right. you know what bear, I mean. That shows at five. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you a cue when it's when it's coming. Yeah, y'all are on the on the cool with George and yeah, oh, yeah. whole rest with Cade. Oh, yeah. High spots, Cade. You know, y'all are filming it, right? Uh, you filming the show? You know? No, we're filming this. Okay. This, this is, is more important. Hey, fuck it. This is more important. So, so the bear was kind of a work, but it's still a fucking bear. Yeah. It had no the bear is trying as hard as it's playing. Yeah, it gets, you know what I mean? It gets, it's still a bear, though. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're still fighting a grizzly bear. A, bear. bear. a grizzly bear can bake a bull stick. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, it can. You never wrestled a grizzly, did you? Uh, the, the one, uh, the second one. like this all the time. Grizzly. The second one was seven foot, what now? I said a bear. Be like this all the time, <laughs> like that all the time. That's scary, right? Yeah. Would you ever wrestle the bear? No. No. The second one was seven foot three, two thousand, nearly a ton. Jesus. That's crazy. But guy said he was part grizzly, part Alaskan brown bear or something. You know, he's a big motherfucker. I had, you know, uh, Jim Cornette told me that the Poffos were notorious for using ginger yeah, bear. Yeah. Always used ginger yeah. in Kentucky. Always drew them houses. Would it would it increase the house? Can you, and you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Could, could you imagine the Kentucky Athletic Commission? <laughs> They'd ask if it was now, licensed. Nowadays they need it licensed. But you first. know what the Humane Society, the yeah, World Wildlife yeah. Fund, the, the, any Athletic Commission. Because there's all this internet. Any out athletic. There now. Yeah. Back then you could athletic. hide it. And it is inhumane. It is. It is. So you wrestled a total of three bears. Yeah, three different bears. Wow. Anyone else you know of that wrestled the bear? Any other well-known wrestlers? <laughs> Everyone was like, "Fuck it, we'll let Tracy do it." <laughs> Yeah, there's been guys did it. Yeah. Now, Ginger yeah. passed away, I know. Oh, they all. They've all passed on. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Did there's you... several guys that have done it. So that would you say that was one of the more dangerous things you've done in your career? Stupid? Would you call it stupid, or would you just say was... you were young and just crazy? Yeah. That's young it. and crazy? Still crazy. But you Still know crazy. You know, yeah. <laughs> no. But, I mean, you know, you know, the thing is, 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 is with the fours, it was worth my while to do it, money wise, and, and I worked three times. I taught a ton of gimmicks. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, I mean, and, I, and did, and, and 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 that's just you know that's whatever. It is, I mean, I encourage everyone to YouTube uh, Tracy Smothers versus the Bear. It comes it hundreds of thousands of views. It is a, a, amazing to watch you. But it's, this is a real bear, Tracy. I mean, what's it like when you get up? Is it growling? Is it? I mean, you can't. It's like grabbing twenty five people. That one you see on YouTube was a, was a cub. Was was a, was ten young, months. Ten months, five hundred fifty pounds. Gained 100 pounds in a month, got up to about uh, 1,000, 1,200 pounds, they said, you know, something like that, 1,500 pounds. The biggest one was the second one, was, was seven feet, it was nearly seven feet, 2,000 pounds. But the toughest was Ginger. That Ginger was, was a bad bitch. Well, that was because of the Ginger cow. was a bad bitch. She didn't play. We don't like she bad went, bitches. Hey, is what, what Jim Ross used to say, he ain't working for, what is it, time? or? or oh, Watts uh, time or something. How that go? You know, know, some, yeah. I always like that quote. That's the way I better there to take you out. You better take you out. So you think if, even with no teeth and all that, you, that, that bear could have killed you if it wanted to? Yeah. Even with a cattle prod and a shame. Yeah, oh, yeah. And oh, you, yeah. Honestly, that's what people probably wanted to see. They wanted to see the bear kill you. That's the way society is these days. Oh, yeah. Craziness. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, I mean, is there anyone else on the top of your head you could think of that wrestled a bear? I mean, that, that we would all know here? 
I guess you could, you two, I know some of the boys have them. I'm surprised the guy like Tommy Dreamer hasn't wrestled a bear. Oh, he, well, he would do it. About that, during that time then, that, after that it was no more. No more. They, they the pretty well, yeah, yeah. Like, They come they, down on that, that was a big stink, you know. I mean, I understand, but it's still every now and then. It showed on the news in Birmingham, and they wanted to put it like the bear was uh, being uh, inhumane, up. but it put, made it the way it came off, the way the news, like the bear's having fun. It's like what my they're expense. doing. Okay? Yeah, the bear's just thinking. i my life. The bear thinks it's playing, pretty much. Then after yeah, a while, it realizes yeah, it's yeah, not playing, yeah. and that's when it tries yeah, to beat yeah. you. Yeah. How, do you, how do you do the, uh, the bear impression again? Would you say, fuck it, man, to the bear? Would you say that? Yep, I'd right. say it to a bear. Right. But I, I would like to shoot one of them. You'd like you to shoot a bear? Oh, man. Yeah. You're probably. a hunter? I ain't no hunter, but I know somebody is. Because they say a bear kind of strong. Kind, he oh. just talked to, for 20 minutes about a bear. I would yeah, kill you. Kind of. Yeah, yeah they can't, they, they'll use their claws to cut you up like a knife if they want to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to see the footage. This guy wrestled a bear. I heard about that. Yeah. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you on my phone. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable. Okay, yeah. so you're finished with uh, wrestling uh, wild animals. So what's the next step for you? Uh, WCW? 89, went back to work Tennessee. Was going to uh, Japan. 88. I mean, you've been 88, 88, uh, Steve and I started, was working Continental, was working Tennessee and Continental, somewhere in there. When you say Steve, when, you mean? Armstrong. Yep, yep. Uh, we did four tours, New Japan, you sure. know, and, uh, and I went back to work Tennessee, was getting overseas tours there, anywhere, Singapore, Malaysia, all that, going to Japan. Uh, so you're making money. And then I got in a w- I went to Mexico a couple times. Mexico. A couple tours, and then I uh, went to WCW in 1990, Kevin Sullivan, Jim Cornette. Got us in Eddie Gilbert. Got us in, in, in WCW. And, you know, Did you like Eddie? Yeah, he was good to me. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot from him. He was way ahead of his time. Well, great mind. Yeah. To the business. With great work. Or what a heel. He was fantastic. What a man. What a mind. Unbelievable. Uh, so you're doing good at this point. You're making money. Yeah, I worked 90 to 92 WCW. Wow. Worked pre version of Midnight Express, Steiners, you know. Absolutely, kind of yeah. Kevin Nash, first pay per view, worked with him in that. Now, who was, was he, Oz then? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he was. Master Blaster. Master Blaster. Al Green, he died. Yeah. Did you see Kevin Nash today? He was there. I saw him against Chensei Oto. I saw Scott Hall. Scott Hall, yeah. I was beside his son a lot of the day. Oh, yes, Cody. his son Cody, yes. Okay, so you're, so, you're, so you're living the dream. You're making money wrestling. So now you're, you're not second-guessing the whole college dropout thing. No. You're, no. you're happy. Yeah. You always told me you were making a very good middle class upper class income yeah you were happy yeah, yeah. Uh, you're doing the WCW thing eventually you end up in extreme championship wrestling yeah, 992 worked WCW two and a half years after that worked Jim Cornette sure uh, Smoky Mountain 92 latter part of 92 to 95 they were closed I was going to Japan about four or five times a year for wing IWA went for Bob a few times and uh, for Jimmy whatever you know Jimmy Cornette worked a uh, <coughs> First problem with uh, White Boy, Dirty White Boy. Dirty White Boy. <coughs> um, what was it like Where's in Smoky Mountain? Where's my flag? Mountain? Your flag's right here. No, no, my other flag. Which there flag? it is. No, that's my, Sp- that's my Sandy shirt. Oh, there's Sandy's. Why don't you give him a plug? Sandy's picture right now? Okay. <laughs> anyway, I gotta do that. Gotta do that. And on Facebook. Covered in red. Fort Branch, Indiana. Cliff Compton. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I uh, uh, worked for Jimmy in 92 to 95, worked independence around that, worked Japan. You know. What was Smoky Mountain like? Tell, tell everyone. Good we'll, times. Good times, Yeah, huh? a lot of fun. One of the last. What led to the downfall of Smoky Mountain? Because I thought it was uh, a great place. I mean, well, I didn't work there. But the economy really... in some of the in the mountains, you know, was yeah, not so good. Not so and, good. And uh, uh, it was hard because in the summertime, people were outside, and it was more springs and uh, fall, cave in, uh, winter. Well, summer just really died. And Jimmy was doing a lot with WWE. Yeah. He was in uh, booking, you know, kind of in creative, some, I guess. And he wouldn't, he didn't fly. He, he drove. He still does. Them. Yeah. He drive to Europe if he could. Yeah, all those places. And it's taken a lot of his time. And, and just what, really, too, he stayed loyal to his guys. And we were all kind of old news there. I should have turned heel a long time ago. Candido there, there at the time. But I sound good again. Yeah, yeah. I worked, uh, my first program was White Boy. They did the chain matches and all that with White Boy. It was a lot of fun. And, and rock and roll was working heavily. Bodies was a good deal. Brian Lee was working Kevin Sullivan. Uh, uh, I can't remember what I was saying. 
Uh, and then uh, Brian Lee. Yeah. yeah. After after that, uh, I worked. Jericho was there, right? Chris Jericho. Oh yeah, yeah. Him and Lance, Lance Storm. Storm. Yeah, yeah. They come in as the Thrill Seekers. Yeah. The thrill Seekers. Yeah, sure do. And then. Uh, the, the Jericho New Jack was there. For New a Jack, while. yeah, with the gangsters. Uh, worked yeah. probably Rock and Roll Express uh, a long time. They did that. The Bruise Brothers, you know, Ron and Don Harris. Yeah, Eli and Jacob Blue. Yeah. Worked with Rock and Roll. I worked with, uh, uh, after White Boy, I worked with probably Brian Lee, brought in Sonny. Uh, she was uh, uh, Tammy, Tammy Ruin Sitch. Tammy Ruin Sitch. Here with thing. Put Brian Lee with her and uh, put a lot of heat on them and with that. And then after that, White Boy started working, turned White Boy Babyface, he started working Brian Lee. I worked Candido. Yeah, yeah. You want to hear a good story of Chris Candido? Sure, sure. Uh, Chris Candido was in Newport, uh, Tennessee. Uh, Jimmy wanted to bring in Tony. Back then, we were starting to work together some in New York with WWE. And Jimmy wanted to uh, uh, put Tony Atlas with Tammy. You know, really? black guy with white girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and in that area, he. And me work with Tony, and Tony didn't come. They said, "Now that's what was told." You know how it is. Said Tony's wife didn't wouldn't go for it because back then you didn't, you know, you watched yeah, that sure. kind of thing. You know, now, you know, anything goes. Yeah, now. yeah. And, and this is twenty years ago. And we're in Newport, Tennessee, and they didn't really have much going. You know how it is when you're working a small yeah. place. They have much going. They didn't have, you know, and they didn't have really nothing for me. Candido had been working Tim Horn, you know, a little problem. Great work, worked his ass off, you know. And I'd watch your matches, go, man, he's good. You know, I, I told him, I beat him every night. And and, and uh, uh, I says, I says, well, I said, what do they got playing? He goes, Jimmy, don't know. I can't. And I didn't have no Japan tours going. Oh, I had one coming up, I think. And I, and I says, I says, hey, I says, I said, let me work with a kid there. And they says, who? He says, that one little kid right there, a suicide boy. I said, the kid's crazy. You know, I said, I want to work with him. I can get him. I think I can get him over. He goes, man. He goes, Tim Horner's beat him every night. Had him. Sucking on baby bottles. He worked Bobby Blaze. They had some good matches with Bobby Blaze for that. Great matches they had. Didn't really a program at work, and you just saw it. He worked his, you know, he was like, you know, he hustled, worked his ass off. Sure. And so, uh, and that was it. Worked with him, and you know, and, and he was just so hungry to make it. He pushed best matches I've ever had. Is single matches as a this, baby face. This is Chris Candido. Candido. Yeah. 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 And uh, he was out of this world, and he laid out everything he wanted to do. I just, oh, you know, he was point A to point B. Oh, he was night and day. I mean, really? He go wow. take a piss and had a finish. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? He just, oh yeah, yeah, he was fantastic. And then he went. On, he left and went with the body Donna. Yeah, and all went, that, right? Sonny went first. Yeah. Went, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and then they protected him and Brian up after he worked with me and uh, uh, and Brian Lee and then we brought the girl. I worked with Oli Anderson some. Really? And, uh, yeah. He was uh, just come out of UT Chattanooga as a shooter. I called back suplex when he really back suplex. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fought for my life. We do like work or shoot, you know, do 20 minute broadways around the 30 minute broadways. Then I work Bruiser and Bedlam. You guys know who that is? He's in prison for murder. Yeah. Killed two people, man. Jesus. One was asleep. Was in the joint before that for uh, drug trafficking. What was his name? Bruiser Bedlam. He was Johnny Canine in WWE. Okay, wow. Real, got juiced up, a huge power lifter, strong. And he's currently in him. prison. Yeah. Well, uh, New Jack, uh, the, the gangsters come in and worked with. Uh, with uh, uh, rock and roll, their first day, somewhere in North Carolina, we're on the edge of North Carolina, Virginia, like Tennessee, some town, doing TV. They had their boys from, uh, from Atlanta come up. Their and friends? These guys were legit gangsters, you know what I mean? You know? And these guys were all out of the parking lot. And OJ had done that. You know what I mean? That oh, was a big Jay deal. Simpson. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, big, and, big and we're in this town, and we're doing three or four TV tapes. I can't remember. And I always kept a bead on the cops because if I had cops in the places were clean. And that gimmick, I'm, I'm not into that, man. That's, I mean, it's a gimmick. I'm a country boy, and I don't portray it to that or anything. You know, I don't. You know, come well, on. Well, everyone, you're not, you're not in the clan. Let's just. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not clan. Okay, I'm not. I'm not prejudiced. I'm not. I Despite what y'all might Beyonce think. Beyonce is the baddest bitch walking. I don't care if she's orange or purple. Okay? Just take, let's just get that through. All right? You know what I'm saying? Fuck it, man. She's hot. Fuck it. Yeah, no offense, Jay-Z. But it's all good. We're talking. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> but no, no. Hey, New Jack and, and Mustafa were hungry. And I knew both of them boys. I'd seen Mustafa around a little bit. You know, New Jack. Uh, you know, a little. And they, you know. Uh, they had that, and, and I think Jimmy put the gimmick on. Maybe they had a gimmick, but he brought them in, and they they did the 
uh, interview and had them pass come to the parking lot and surround the ring. And then they did the interview and Jack was talking and, you know, gangster. You know what I mean? Didn't, nobody was doing that on TV. I think Harlem Heat might have been, was getting going then, but they didn't really come off as gangster. You know what I mean? Yeah. They come off as boys from the hood, tough guys, but not gangsters. Well, uh, Jack, his interview, he goes, oh, he goes, he goes, y'all got to deal with me. He said, he goes, oh, and OJ. Keep up the good work. Oh, you got two of them down. Jesus it's like that. Christ. Ricky, we're in the dressing room. But, oh my God! And you got two or three cops out there. They didn't. They were uneasy because they didn't want any trouble and white. You know how it is, you know, and all that. Of course. They didn't want. Course. You know, whatever they were. I don't know if they were or not. We didn't ask. This was and, 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 stuff. And, yeah. And I went, oh God. Ricky goes, we can draw money with them. We can draw money with them. I said. We're all gonna die. <laughs> We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. And I went and talked to the cops. He goes, look. He goes, I got it. It's cool. I know that's what y'all do. It's Dak. He said, just get him out of the county, okay? Whoa. As quick as you can. The guy told me, he goes, please, buzz. I went and told Jimmy, and Jimmy don't, you know. He don't care. No, no. He he says, that's too these guys are sitting, you know. And, and yeah. Well, Dujak was real worried. The first week around, he drove a, like a purple Corvette to every show. <laughs> was purple wearing, Corvette? Yeah, something like that. It was a Corvette. Flashy. Yeah. It, we were at a, a, a fair show, and it was uh, Taswell, Tennessee, you know. This sheriff is showing us all this stuff with all these people he'd arrested. He's talking about this one lady. She's so fat. Says that uh, they can't arrest her. She sells moonshine. She, and she's pushing crack. He said, we won't worry about moonshine, but the crack, worry about it. She, we can't put her in jail, so why? She she's fat, she can't get in the cell. So she won't lose weight, because we'll arrest her. You know, they had stuff with that deer antler and stuff with, uh, uh, with you guys, roach clips yes. and stuff and all kind of stuff. And so they carried us the golf carts to the ring. And the fair's up on the hill, we're down here, right? Sometimes the fair's a long way. And they're in the ring, me and White Boy, White Boy and I were working with, with New Jack and Mustafa. And Mustafa. White Boy didn't really want to work with, I, I didn't work with D-Lo. You know, and they were all hungry, wanting it bad. You know, you know, and, and working hard. And I heard New Jack go, "Well, this is us. This is what we look like. We the gangsters. We black. Okay, <laughs> because we right here." And you heard everybody go, "Oh, I went, oh God!" So we get to the ring, and I did. I said, "Just jump us." You know, you know, we just brawled around and did. But yeah, one night in, in uh, Harlan, Kentucky. You guys heard of that? Harlem, Bloody, Bloody Kentucky? Harlem, Kentucky. Oh, Harlem. At least Harlem. Harlem. Bloody Harlem. It was a real rough, mean place. All right, white boy and I worked with him on a baseball field. I look out, and there's two outlaw guys in the ring fighting. Swatting at them. They're up on the thing, and Jack was just, but get out of here. Get out of here. We try to work. He goes, we're wrestlers, too. And I come running. but what are y'all doing? I take him up to the gimmick table, real rednecks. You know, I know one of them. I see him around some of my shows. Still see him around. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. And, and, and I come up and do it. I go, what are you doing? He goes, well, we're wrestlers too. I said, you're not booked. He said, fuck us. No, fuck you. And I pulled him off the, I grabbed his leg and he took it, he hit the apron and I Jeez. fucking nailed him. You know what I mean? Not the one guy I liked, the other guy. This was in Harlan, and, Kentucky. And, yeah, and Mustafa. Mustafa was swinging at the other guy. I was getting out of the way. Anyway. Jesus. One time, Ron and Don and the gangster, we were doing a thing with uh, the gangsters. Uh, we're getting ready to bring Undertaker in. Uh, yeah. For those, uh, 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 Johnson City, Pikeville, uh, maybe Barberville. Johnson City, Pikeville, I know. Knoxville. Yeah. Maybe. Well, uh, they were leaving us all laying. They had Blue Bradley, Balls Mahoney. They were leaving other baby faces laying through the night. You know, and they covered Cornette. And before they were getting ready to do, Jimmy and I, I was working a single match with New Jack, and they were going to get heat on us. And, and Jimmy like act like he wanted to manage him against rock and roll, and they turned on Jimmy, turned Jimmy Bay face with Bob Armstrong, gonna bring him in, Undertaker, six man tag with the gangsters. Well, they uh, do a thing, and, and before we're getting ready to do the big deal with the final heat, three TV tapings, uh, they had done that to balls. He's pushing both pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. And I don't know what happened. Then cops come in the dressing room and go, hey, we don't go for that here, and we don't like them kind of, that we don't have that gangster stuff in this area, Ooh. around here, somewhere in Virginia. You know what I mean? I can't Jesus. remember. Right? You show me a map, I'll show you. And I knew that these guys were serious. And Jimmy's trying to argue with you. Can't argue. You know, they were, you know, they were ready to shut the TV down and everything. Really? And we were building to those shows. And I just like, look, and you didn't smart people up. I said, look, and New Jack and Mustafa and Dill were back in the back. And they were ready to roll. They were ready to fight. And I think Ron and Don might have been ready to fight. And these are the cops. Yeah. 
Not that this is not good because nobody's giving. So I went to him, I said, hey, come here, come here, can we talk to you guys? I said, look, guys, I said, this is a work. This is rigged. This is fixed. Everything new we're doing. Ooh. This is for show. I said, this is to build up to bring Undertaker and Bob Armstrong with me, with Jimmy Cornette in the corner. And I said, we're going to throw down. We're going to kick the fucking ass. We're going to try to. And the guy goes, Undertaker's coming here. <laughs> he thought he's coming there, Virginia. I said, no, no, he's not coming here. He's coming to Pikeville. It wasn't too far from there. I said, he's going to be in Johnson City. And I, I don't know if it's Knoxville. I can't remember. I, I was plugging it, but I was telling him. I said, it's going to be a shoot. It's going to be a fight, man. It's going to be a fucking fight. You know, I, can't, I said, but if you shut us down, we're shut down. We're done. Smoking Mountain Wrestling's no more. And, and the guy said, that's fine. He goes, just get him out of my county. Just get him out of my county. So All these right? guys were right. I understand they're doing what they got to do. Just just get them out of my county. So just people were just, people were not even, were at the matches, were coming in droves. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get, I get what oh, you're yeah, saying. Yeah. So this is just out of town. Co corrupt county. Well, you know. Uh, I mean, they, they were racist, obviously. That, they were, and, and they just, uh, uh, they bought it. They believed yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were hillbillies. Hillbillies. And I, I, mean, I they're probably still like that today out there, I would imagine, wouldn't you? Yeah, they are. Jesus. <laughs> they, they, are. they are. But not as uh, not as racial. No. But no. that what I mean is is now it's different. That you know people still believed back then. Yeah, but then back then that wasn't portrayed on T V. Yes. You get what I'm saying? You know what I mean? What saying. Twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, yeah. Jim Ross was commentating. You know, you wow. know. Jim Ross knew how to get angles over so he, you know. Yeah. So this is this is towards your Smoky Mountain. Run, yeah. And then you end up in ECW, correct? After that, uh, I worked. Uh, I, we were doing the USWA Smoky yeah. Mountain feud. We did that toward the tail end, doing that. Worked USWA, got some independence around it. Uh, got in with Vince uh, about. Uh, of course. Uh, uh, ninety six, early ninety six. So now the whole. We 90, I went to Japan a few times, more three or four weeks or months in a row, and working independence and got in with Vince and got independence around it. Yeah. And I wasn't, you know, and was there Freddie Joe year. Floyd, for yeah. people who don't remember. And at tail end, I worked uh, 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 for ECW and then. So. And, and you were working with, back then, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, yeah. Steve Austin, yeah. who was uh, yeah. probably with the ringmaster still? Uh, or is he doing when I worked with I worked Steve some for WCW. Sure. And uh, But when I, worked, when I worked with him a few times there for WWE, he was getting ready to work with Brett. Okay. And when he, Brett was really over and come back and done that, dropped the belt to Sean. And when he, I can remember working with him on the Superstars and before tapes, and uh, I remember when he talked about Brett, boy, ugh, he was instantly over. Stone yeah. Cold was born. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Now, now, a lot of people don't know this, but the Freddie Joe Floyd gimmick was kind of, the name was kind of a rib, correct? It, was, it had to do with the Briscoes? Uh, something, Jack and Jerry... One was named Freddie, Fred, and one named Joe, or, or Boyd, or something. Floyd County, and or something. Around, like that. Either Floyd County, or somewhere around like Bow Legs, around that area. And, you know, and, and it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was off of Jack Briscoe, Jerry Briscoe. Yeah, but you were you worked for Vince for a good three years, right? You were well, a year. On and off. A year, and then when I was, I worked for ECW two and a half years. And then about six months there, you know, some of them still. And then about six months, a few months after I got let go with uh, ECW, I worked part time for ECW in the area, part time for WWE, sure. some shows, TVs, extra for about six months. Because you know I've mean? seen you know, some of your ECW. High Spots got, has a huge library of ECW fan yeah, cam footage, yeah. and then you're all over it. Yeah. All over yeah. it. Uh, with Guido, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy Dreamer put Guido with Tommy Rich already, and then put me with. Uh, Tommy Dreamer. Sure, sure. And uh, after ECW, of course. Uh, now, now, you took some time off for a little while, no? After ECW, I worked uh, independence uh, for, you know, uh, for a while. I was real busy. I worked part-time for ECW, part-time for WWE, and a lot of independence. I got on in 2000 as a trainer in the developmental in uh, Memphis. Oh, yeah, okay. And I uh, was there close to a year. Uh, and Rob, you're still a young guy at this point. I was 37. Yeah, but you're not you're not old. Yeah. You're not young, but you're yeah. not old. Yeah, I was 37. You could still go. Well, I don't know. You could still <laughs> go now. I don't know about that. I can't hardly walk if I try. Fuck it. Fuck it, man. Fuck it, Fredo. Yeah. Fuck you it. Know, but but uh, uh, I was 37. Uh, Ron Killens, R-Truth was there. Of course. Me, Screen Posse, Joey Abs. guys remember him? Sure. That, he should have been a star. Joey Abs. Joey Abs. Murray, Bo Duck. Bo Duck. I remember Murray. 
Okay, so you're training guys in 2000 ish. Uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, Ryan Kendrick, Lance Cade, all Shawn Michaels students. Yeah, yeah. So okay, and then and then after that, how long were you training guys? About close to a year. And then that that didn't that did they just decide that you got to let go? Yeah, it's no, no problem. What no of politics? Or well, I I uh, was I guess they told me I was really too much one of the boys. Yeah, I heard they don't like that. No, I heard they like they wanted that at distance. You yeah. Know? And they took me in the room and told me about that, and I didn't do it. Yeah, you're not. A, you don't seem like a yes man to me. No. You don't. That's but but uh, it was a heck of experience, and was around a lot of good guys and a lot of good, you know. And uh, uh, but I mean, I knew when I walked in there my first day that if I was there six months, I'd be lucky. Yeah. You know. But I mean, you you love this. I, it's like this. See that wall right there? It's yeah. White. It is white. You guys know who Bill Eighty is. That's a good man. Huh? Demolition good acts. Dude. You know what he said to me? It's so true, and I remember that I'll never forget this. He said, Vince wanted me to be an agent for him. He said, I can't do it. He says, why? He says, see that white wall right there, Vince? You come in, you want me to say, go, and you say, hey, nice black wall. I'm going to tell you it's white. Wow. True that story. That sense? Yeah. Wow. And I, I always saw looked at like, today. Yeah, I didn't get to say hello to him. He's a great around. guy. But you're still going strong. I mean, everyone knows you. Everyone loves strong. you. <laughs> but no, I mean, I see some of these younger guys, and, and me and you have had our fair share of uh, interaction on the yeah, scene in the last year. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of these young kids that say, what's it like working with Tracy? And I say, it's fucking, it's phenomenal because these kids can take so much away from a guy like you who's been around for so long. You can teach, just by, you know, you can teach them so much. Oh, as right, you True. You got to oh, talk right, to Jake Manning. Yeah. That would be eye pay per view type shit. Okay. I mean, I talked to. We'll get you in touch with Jake. How, how tall are you? Six five. How, how heavy are you? I'm real heavy. I weigh three twenty. He's like a bear. You Can he work? He, Is he good? Yeah, I'm real good. He's <laughs> a former champion. Do you think you could? You would? You'd be willing to tangle with? Uh, he faced Eugene in uh, what was it, Clarksville? Awesome. No, Stallion yeah. training. Charles Town, Indiana. Stallion and yourself helped you. You uh, learned right. Joyce out. Didn't help me that much, but Stallion helped me a little bit to he turned over to the Black Angel. He helped me more. Yeah. That R Truth helped train me mm -hmm. too. Oh, yeah. 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 So you're still going. Well, what what makes you still go, Tracy? I'm 34. What makes me still go? What makes you still I retired oh. three times. Really? Oh, my God, I retired more than he's terrified. He did big shows that he yeah. tried to quit. You just quit, but you're still going. I think I'd have been dead if I didn't. Nobody quit. wants you to quit. Everyone's like, "Oh, is Tracy I'm on the show?" I hope Tracy's on the show. I need to start doing this yoga. Everybody says, "You think we need yoga?" Man, I'm, I'm stiff as a board. You're bored. I'm uh, stiff as a board. Oh, stiff as a board. But after I got let go, W, uh, 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 the belt man, you know, I mean, they paid me three months. They actually, paid me four months. They forgot about pay. me. Yeah, they forgot about me. You didn't have to give it back, did you? No. Good. That's nice. But anyway, uh. uh but you remember Reckless Youth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were going to put a gimmick on him. Bruce Pritchard had the gimmick. I think it was some kind of like gay type gimmick or something. Reckless. Gold dust? Reckless talked Daniel Bryan a lot, talked Brian Kendrick a lot in the ring, and of course Steve Regal, you know, did, you know, before he left. And yeah. then Robbie Brookside come in, and now I guess he's back with them, right? Taught him, taught those guys a lot. And, uh, uh, I would work with more of the guys at Lance Cave, R Truth, some of them guys, you know, and stuff. And Regal would get with them, you know what I mean? A lot of do. And work with them in the ring and, and all. And uh, Joey Abs was shouldn't even been there. He should have been, you know, he should have been uh, being pushed. What, what would, was that a political thing? You think or? I heard that Hunter called him, peeled up. Really. And Hunter didn't like him. Joey had a, Joey had a, Joey Joey wise. Yo, know, he didn't tell like it is. He didn't. And, and, and I think Hunter. He didn't like that. Listen, yeah. Uh, uh, Joey <coughs> could do all the stuff the Hardys could do, but 275 pounds, plus work, wrestle, amateur wrestler, he could do anything. Joey Abs was Roman Reigns, was a better worker than Roman You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. More wound as a worker, had to look, yeah. everything. He could have been a big, big star. He was getting ready to go back up, and it seemed like if somebody wasn't in click, with somebody well, with top guys they didn't make it wow you know what I mean that's and unfortunate don't you think so yeah you think there's just too much politics there's always going to be politics in wrestling but I mean there's just so there's more much politics in wrestling there is actual politics I know it's, it's craziness
But it's always been that way, right? From the, from when you started till now. Hey, I like punk's interview. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> Did you hear the whole thing? He told it like it is. Huh? I read about four or five different interviews. Yeah. yeah. Did you actually hear it? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, it's on YouTube, but uh, yeah, he uh, really told. You know, he told this. Story. He was always real smart. What I remember him, I worked with him. Him, Colt, remember nineteen. And uh, Chris Hero, yep. they all were running around yep. together. And Ace Steel. Ace Steel. Danny Dominion trained them. I remember, and uh, they worked there. They went everywhere, man. He used to see them he all around He was always the real smart. Worked with them boys a lot. You are, you are, you're a big fan of his, though. You think in the last five years he's he's done, you would say, you know, very well for himself, obviously. But, I pulled for him, man. But, you know, well, he's you very know different, though, you like know, you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. thing is, though, is like uh, – um, he come from the mold of guys like Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, where they, the reason they put the belt on those boys at the what, WrestleMania 20, because they taught all the developmental guys that never even watched wrestling how to work. Sure. Everybody knew that, and they got their brains beat out doing it because they're not tall guys. They're getting hit by six foot five boots and all of that. At least they had everything they did, and, and they did that as a favor to them for what they did for them. Well, Punk in that line, that's why he's so beat up now. Yeah, yeah. Seen the shit he's, Daniel Bryan, too, look at him, man. Yeah, he's got a couple You know, I mean, he's got, all these guys are jacked, you know, and they're in the ring with. I mean, I've seen some stuff. I got that 24-7. I do my little workout, too, and I catch yeah. some pay-per-view stuff. He did with Rock, yep. Rock, you know, Ryback. Big Show, Ryback, and all that. God, you know. And, and, Killing him. And he's, what, 210, 205? 215, I mean, two, yeah, He's two not a small guy, guy, but those guys yeah, are just Yeah, monsters. I mean, they're all Jack juiced up. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, 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 but I always, with, with, with Punk, with Cabana, with Colt Cabana's doing great now. He told me last year he did 150,000 miles on the right on the airfare. Something like that, Com- yeah. Comic, comedian, mm-hmm. and, and uh, wrestling shows, too, and everything. Yeah. And, but but Punk would always was real smart, didn't do drugs, always was real dedicated. He'd always drink a protein shake when he come out of the ring. Sure. I sure always remember him. Is he still do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. He'd always, it was 19, I remember, and he was real, real smart. I remember uh, we pulled him out of a match, worked for Ian Rotten at the old IWA, and uh, I was working Sabu around the loop, and I uh, put him in three-way with me and Sabu and I. You know, that's the first time he really worked with the name guys, you know, he, I'd worked with him a couple of times you know, yeah. and we did a thing and put him, I said, well, I said, I'm going to get him over and, and uh, he'd pump him up at the finish and, and he's, Raven used to do it, do it. Somebody oh, hit their Raven. finish and he knocked him out of the way and covered him. Yeah. He did that with Punk. You know? Raven, yeah. And, uh, and, and he was working all over everywhere then and for Ian, he did work with guys like Eddie and, and, and uh, you know, a lot of them guys like that, Raven Stewart, well not Raven Stewart, but uh, a lot of name guys. He, sure, you know, sure, sure. He worked a lot of different styles overseas and all and did. So he he had a lot of knowledge to give to the developmental guys, you know, like Daniel Bryan does. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. There's not many of them left. Not many at all. No. Cesaro, same way. Cesaro. You're a big fan of Cesaro, aren't you? He's great. Yeah. yeah. Claudio, Claudio. I've worked with him. He's been in the ring with him. He's Whoa. just uh, He's fantastic. Guys like you are fading away, though. Guys like you are, you know, I mean, uh, hard to come by. Them left, no, but the guys with your knowledge, these kids uh, today should just be. Al Snow. Yeah, Al Snow's Al around. Snow. I was on a show with him last week in a yeah, bar. Yeah. Craziness. Well, uh, yeah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you got a battle royal you got to get to, buddy. I don't know. What time is it? Yeah, uh, it's four it, thirty. It's, it's time. I got to win, man. Yeah. Number one contendership for Russell K. Twenty grand. <laughs> So what? what any, any plug, you want to plug anything here? I mean, where can people yeah, find you? Yeah, all right. Uh, next week, um, December sixth, um, for uh, D1W, uh, New Albany, Indiana. New Albany, yeah. You know, for D1W, Rick Brady, Ron Azal. I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, this might I'm not be out by then, but yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybell Smothers wrestling Mary Dobson. Been on WWE some here lately. Yeah. Uh, I'm wrestling. Uh, uh, please don't be mad. I can't it's not so, important. As long as nah, it's important. Yeah. Uh, he's the trainer for W One W. He's a tough kid. And uh, um, anyway, uh, December thirteenth, supposed to wrestle in Nashville, Kentucky. If it runs, I don't know. December nineteenth, I'm up around. Uh, it's it's uh, Valla Parazo for the guy. I'm there too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. December twentieth, I'm in a uh, uh, pro wrestling syndicate. Okay. And, uh, Jersey. And AJ. Yeah. Yeah. Jersey. That's right. Are you there? No. But I know where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you're a busy man. I'm, I'm there December nineteenth, December twentieth. Uh, 
January 10th, I'm back for that same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, and then uh, fe- middle of February, I'm supposed to be for WrestleCade, I think, or whatever it is. So that's about it. Oh, that's, not, that's not bad. Well, I'd like to say thank you so much. Always and a pleasure. Monday through Friday, Sandy's Pizza, Sandy's Pizza.net, Sandy's Pizza on Facebook. And Tracy Smothers on Facebook, yeah? I'll keep my and- tips up. I'm going to pitch you. The well, big for boy, uh, big boy. for Freight Train and Tracy Smothers, I'm uh, Cliff Compton. This was Wake Up Time to Die with the wild eyed Southern boy himself. Fuck it. Fuck, Fuck it. it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. You could have used one of them and use that. <laughs> <laughs>